Hello. Um, we're going to finish this section by I'm, I'm just going to show you some Eclipse tips and tricks, a few things you can do with Eclipse. So hopefully you've created that last program, you've got it all working, you put in the scanner.close and um, or maybe you've created a similar program of your own. There are lots of other things that we can do with strings and we're going to be seeing more of them in the course but rather than overload you with a massive list of everything you can possibly do with a string I'm going to introduce them more, try, try to introduce them more sort of organically as we go through the course. And what I'm going to show you in this video is uh, just a few Eclipse tips and tricks. So one thing you can do in Eclipse is um, I'm using the dark theme here, which in this version of Eclipse seemed to be the default, and I sort of decided just to go with it. Um, but the default used to be uh, the light theme. But you can switch between them and select which one you prefer. So if you go to Eclipse Preferences, uh, so maybe that menu is different on Windows. I'm not completely sure. It might be in File or something. Uh, on the Mac, I get a particular menu called Eclipse. But regardless, however you usually go to the preferences uh, in programs in your operating system, go to that. You should be able to find the, the sort of Eclipse preferences somewhere. And in this dialog, if I type Theme and just click Appearance here, so um, I've got theming enabled and the dark theme is selected. If I want, I can select the light theme. And uh, I'm going to click Apply and Close. Whoa. And then I'm going to restart Eclipse because otherwise um, the sort of the change from one theme to another might not exactly be complete. So I'm going to restart it. So there are a few built-in themes and you can find many more on the internet. Uh, so that's, that's completely up to you. You can get Eclipse to look sort of more how you want it to look. Here we go. So it's very light now. I'll use this for the rest of this video, although it's hurting my eyes. Um, because um, I want to show you some things that don't seem to work. One of them doesn't work too well in a dark theme. Something else I want to show you is... Um, working sets. So you see we've got a lot of programs uh, open here, a lot of projects I should say. It's becoming a bit cluttered and I can make that more manageable using working sets. So this worked fine in the dark theme when I tried it. But if you look at the package explorer on the left here and if it's not showing you can go to Windows, Show View and Package Explorer. Sometimes, strangely, the console disappears and you can make it reappear by going to Window Show View Console. And if you manage to completely screw up your windows in Eclipse, you can go to Window Perspective, Reset Perspective. Those are all good things to know. Um, actually, I should also mention that on the top right here, these are perspectives. Um, so if I click this button, we can open other perspectives. And what a perspective is, is it's just um, a collection of windows that are geared to a particular task. Let's cancel that. And we are using the sort of Java development perspective, and that's what we want for the moment. So uh, working sets, uh, if I look at the Package Explorer, there's a little down arrow just there, View Menu. If I click that, I can go to Select Working Set. And here I'm going to um, I'm going to click New, and I'm going to select Java. Let me make sure that's actually showing on the video here. Click Next, and I'm going to create a working set name called uh, Project Projects One. And I'm going to click the Add All button to say that all the projects that are open should be part of this working set. So a working set, or at least the way I use it, is really nothing but a collection of projects. Let's click Add All and click Finish. Uh, so I'm back on this dialog here. Um, if I click OK, nothing's changed. But let's, let's do that again and create another working set. Let's click the down arrow and go to Select Working Set. And again, I'm going to click new 
select Java, click Next, and I'll create another working set called Projects 2. And I won't add any projects to that. I'll just click Finish and click OK. Now I've got two working sets of projects. So if I click the little down arrow another time and click Select Working Set, I can select projects two or one or both. So let's try projects one. And that's got all the projects in it because I added all the projects to working set one. If I click the down arrow and go to select working set projects two and untick projects one, then it's blank there. It's sort of cleaned it all up. Let's close that. So my projects are all still there. It's just that they're hidden. So that, that's really useful because if you've got lots of projects open, you can decide which ones show at any given moment. Don't forget, you can also just right click them and close them, but then the, the icon would still be there in that case. So um, this, this just helps you organize your projects. And one last thing that I want to show you quickly, uh, which didn't work so well in the dark theme, unfortunately, it was usable, but only just uh, due to sort of clashes of font colors, is this task list. So I can add tasks for myself here. If I click, um, hopefully I can remember this, new task, let's try that, and select local and click finish. I get this view coming up, this task view. Uh, let's create a task for myself. So I want to make another video about primitive types video. Let's say that's a task for me to do. I want to make later on. And I could select a date when it when it's to be completed, um, among other things. So here, but I won't do that. Um, you can do it if you want. Um, and I and this is what I found currently didn't work very well in the dark theme. You you could use it, but you couldn't see these numbers unless you clicked on them or any of this. So that was quite confusing. But I won't use that anyway. What I'm going to do is just save that and you can see it's here in the task view um, it's appeared there I can add categories as well so if I click this little down arrow let me get that into the middle by the new icon I can go um, new category I'll create myself a category called videos click OK Maybe I can drag this task into that category. Let's try. Yeah, that worked. Or you can you can select it when you create a new task. You can um, select category if you've created categories. And you can mark tasks as complete. So you can, um, probably one of these buttons does it. I don't usually use this a lot, but let's right click it. We can go mark as complete, and then it gets a line through it. Or we can right click mark as incomplete. So it's quite useful, quite a handy thing. And if you don't like that, you can just get rid of it if you want. You can just click that arrow. It's gone. Get rid of the outline as well if you're not using that. Uh, let's get rid of this task view and go back to the console. Let's maybe open a file. And if you do all of this and then you get confused and you want your default windows back, you can go to Window, Perspective, Reset Perspective and it will bring them all back. Okay, we'll leave it there for this video. Try those out for yourself. So we've got working sets and tasks and themes if you're interested in themes. Okay, uh, so until next time, happy coding.